So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to take you through how, um, how I typically work. So when I'm creating illustrations for maths, um, there's a million ways to do it, but obviously I've done quite a lot. So this is the, the best way that I've found to, to work and it's the way I prefer to work. So um, I'm going to take you through it. So this is a bit of, um, this is sort of like the, what we're going to go through. Um, and this will sort of like explain it, but also show you how to do it a little bit as well. Um, so <clears throat> I've just, what I've done is I've kind of got some files um, that I've had previously to help explain um, what we're going to do. So um, that's sort of like the file setup. Um, but typically this is sort of like the manuscript we'd get from a publisher. So we've typeset this one previously um, and we've done all the illustrations. So um, this was a really nice one um, because they gave us a really good manuscript and the illustrations were, were fairly well done and it allowed us to put artwork numbers on all of them. So this is pretty typical, but having said that, it's not always typical. So um, yeah, so if you have a look through here, these are the illustrations that we've had to, to create. So we've you know, pre-numbered them all. Um, which is super convenient. Um, and just to give you a bit of a show of what the final product is, uh, this is this is sort of the prelims. So um, um, so they're the sort of like the final illustrations that we've had to create uh, in there. Um, as you can see, they're all sort of um, of a particular style, particular stroke weight, particular uh, font size um, um, and they're really consistent um, so here's a couple other examples so this is a typical chapter with a few illustrations so <clears throat> so that's what we want to try to achieve um, so when I create illustrations I'll typically use two files um, what I use what I call a working file which is the one you see here and that's where I create the illustration and then I typically use what I call uh, like a final file. So a final file is this sort of thing. Um, and um, this just helps to make sure that, you know, the job goes as smoothly as possible and it's as easy as possible. So, um, so the first thing I'm gonna show you with these two files is really important is what we call the type options. So if you go over to here and you go to document setup, um, and you go over here to type, these have all been set. And these superscripts and subscripts are obviously really super, super important uh, when doing maths because we want the whole book to look consistent. Um, so like, basically if you have superscripts and subscripts here, they'll sort of match the illustrations. So if you copy, if you just create a new document, um, say if I just create a new document here, so, yeah, A3, that'll be big enough. Um, so um, that's the standard, which is not what we want. Um, they're too, obviously not in the right spot and they're probably too small. So um, obviously that will all be, you know, that'll be based on the design. So, um, and it does change from book to book. So it's super important that we kind of keep that. And say if you created an illustration in your working file and you just created a new file and pasted it in to you know, just any ordinary new file, it's gonna take on those defaults, which is really bad. Like you're gonna ruin all of your nicely created illustrations, right? So that's why we sort of have a, basically a working file and a, a final file so that we can, so if you have a look here, this is actually also set up with those settings so um, the goal is is sort of to um, say if you had say if this was going to be um, um, say superscript like that um, you want that to ah, where are those going on? so you basically want that to be exactly the same when you paste it in here and it is so that's really good. So that's why we, that, I get, that's just one reason why um, use two files. So that's, so that's that. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the next one is 
which is really important also is that you have to be careful of is um, just this is just a little thing um, in your preferences there's a there's an option to scale strokes and effects obviously when we're working for maths obviously we want all of the strokes to be exactly the same we don't we, you know we don't want them to be like kind of strange sizes right so um, if I scale this stroke it's still 0.75 right but if I go to my preferences and have that on and now scale it it's going to be wrong and if it's on and you get caught out and you do a hundred illustrations you're going to have to go back and do it again right or fix it so it's really 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 important um, so that'll get you out of a bit of trouble um, so yeah so that was just go to preferences and general and just turn it off. I think the default is on, which is, you know, really convenient, isn't it, for maths illustrations? Okay, um, so um, I'll just explain um, a bit about a working file and how it can help you. Um, so um, obviously the working file is a working file. It is what it says it is. Um, so um, if you have a look at this one, this is one I like. This is one I did many years ago. But um, if you have a look at, um, there's actually a lot of artwork here. So um, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of useful things here. So there's sort of a bit of a, a style guide with with all the design elements, which will help you to sort of pretty much create any illustration you want. So we've got font sizes, we've got font styles, we've got colors, um, we've got shading, we've got stroke weights, um, fractions, um, and as you can see, you know, we've basically stripped out all of the colors and we've just got the colors that we're using in the book, which is also really good. Um, so, and then, so, um, so basically what I've done here is I've created the working file has got an artboard and the artboard is actually, um, a certain width and that width is basically um, this margin area it's split into two columns so anything you create in here will basically fit a two column layout in the book so it's a really good way to sort of work out you know is my illustration too big is my illustration too small will it fit in a will it fit in a two column layout because this one i guess this this book's probably typically uh you know it's a one column layout but you know quite often we need to sort of go into this sort of two column where we float things off um somewhere or maybe we've got you know we need to do three columns um you know and then that way it gives us a benchmark to sort of get the scale right um all right so so yeah so it's it's you know, I do a different working file depending on um, the type of book I've got. Like I might actually uh, have it the full width and actually create, put in some guides and actually um, sort of show where perhaps a, a column might go to. Um, but in this particular one, majority of them were just in, um, uh, you know, sort of like a half column. So it's to that size. And if you look at this one too, this is actually... You know, obviously this is pre-set up, ready to roll, but um, this is also the same width and the same height. So, you know what, like if you create an illustration, you paste it in here and it doesn't fit, it's sort of a bit of a warning that, you know what, like it's not going to fit in a double column and maybe you need to change the scale or, you know what, maybe it's like five times bigger than this artboard and then you're like you know what it's not even going to fit in the book so you need to fix it so it's a i've seen a lot of people create illustrations and they've created like a whole chapter and because they're not working this way maybe their their artboard's like a4 or something they've just got no idea of how big they're working and i've seen people do yeah a whole chapter way too big and they basically all had to be redone to fit because you're not gonna you know it's not gonna work right it's gonna be too big um so, you know, really, it's sort of really important um, and a really easy way to work and to sort of get yourself out of that problem of maybe making things a little bit too big. Um, so that's that. Um, and then what also I typically do is like, if you, 
if you're creating hundreds and hundreds of illustrations, um, you know, you're going to end up with a lot of artwork, right? And the great thing about having a lot of artwork is, um, you know, you might have 10 that are basically very, very similar and you might only have to change a few little bits of text. So instead of having to create it every single time, you've sort of got something there that you can kind of use as a template and will save you heaps of time. Um, but the downside is, is if you have lots and lots of artwork in your working file, you might find that it might slow you down because the file gets too big. Um, so one way to fix that is obviously, you know, maybe you just do each chapter as a separate working file. And then that way, obviously all the illustrations will be really common to that chapter and there probably won't be any other chapters anyway. Um, and then you won't have so many. Um, so this one here, obviously I've just numbered it, but you know what, you could, you could get to a point where it gets too big and you go, oh, I'll go create a new file. You might create a number two file and then just delete it all and start from fresh. And you, then you, you know, it sort of de-risks the project and you know what if you have a problem with an illustration or something bad happens you can kind of go back and you know you typically you know you say if someone accidentally deletes the file and they need it you know what you can probably go back to this working file and get the original anyway so it's a really really good way of working um yeah it's highly recommend it um so um any questions for anyone no? so um all right so um, the working file is, um, yeah, it's terrific to sort of mitigate risk. And what I mean by that is I'll probably just explain a few things that I've seen happen previously is, uh, and I, I guess I'll repeat the one with scale. That's a typical one. Um, another one might be, um, stray objects. So for example, um, maybe, maybe someone's created, you know, maybe someone's created the artwork here. And then they might have done some working over here and they've left all this artwork in the file. Um, and it could be anything. It could be a photo. It could be a PDF that's been imported in order to create it. It could be part of the manuscript or, or whatever. So, um, you know, I've, I've made that mistake before where I've, I've actually, you know, I've kept saving out files and I've got a PDF in there that's sort of like, it's, you know, I've, um, you know, I've hidden it, so I can't actually see it, but it's actually embedded in the file. And then all of a sudden, you know, you've got a file with like, a, you know, maybe one or two meg PDF in it. And then all of your files from there on end up having this file stuck in it, which is like obviously pretty annoying. Um, and you end up with big file sizes. Um, so, and the other downside about that is if you've accidentally got some stray bits of artwork in there, you know, it could even just be like an empty anchor point or something like that. When the typesetter imports it, you know, they might import it by into InDesign, um, you know, based on the artwork. Um, and, you know, if you've got a point up here, all of a sudden you get a frame come in with a whole bunch of empty space. Um, and obviously that's really bad because then they're going to have to go in and try and fix it or um, go in and delete the stray anchor point. So, yeah, I've seen, it, I've seen it happen a lot where, yeah, they've done something on the side, then they've, you know, they've gone back to here and they don't realise it's over, over on the edge of the artboard somewhere. Um, and, you know, they could do 100 illustrations before they even... They might not even realise. It might be up to the typesetter to realise it. So, um, so that's good. Um, the other one is layers. So, like, you might have, like, 50 layers in here or oh, probably not 50, but um, if you've got a lot of layers going on, and you just say if you grab that and you copy it and you paste it into here basically we've got no stray objects and also it's pasted it all onto a single layer so if you have a look at the layers we've just got one layer so it simplifies the document um, you don't have to worry about any hidden artwork um, and the other good thing is basically we've only just we haven't like you know we haven't got any we've, we've basically stripped out all the other colors and everything's looking really clean and it's as simple as possible and we can kind of get the scale right. So, um, obviously, yeah, um, colour's really important because obviously we're designing these to go into a book and they've got to look consistent. So, um, it's, yeah, it's just a really good way to mitigate any issues with um, yeah, extra artwork or colours or layers that you don't need in the document. Is there any questions? Anyone? Everyone's following up? All right, so... Um, now I go on to the final file. So um, 
I've sort of covered a lot of this already. Um, so at the end of this book, we ended up with basically chapter folders with all the illustrations all numbered consecutively. Um, so I'll just show you. So basically these have all been created, um, you know, what, 2016? Yeah, quite a long, four years ago, right? So, um, so these have all been sort of pasted into the same size artboard. Um, and we just end up with a whole lot of really clean illustrations that all kind of consistently styled. Um, and um, yeah, I guess, you know, if, you, if you're working files nice and, you know, styled and you don't have any issues, it's great because, you know, you'll end up with hundreds of illustrations that are all really well created and, can, you know, right font size, right stroke weights, right colors. Um, so, so yeah, so that brings me to sort of like the file naming. So if you've got, um, if you're creating this artwork, um, you know, we've got a nice sort of template file here and we can kind of just, you know, um, you know, we can save it as, and obviously, you know, maybe, maybe this is chapter nine and this is illustrator number one. Um, and we can just save it. Um, and then that one's kind of done. Um, so, so yeah so file naming really helps and it helps us to get like consecutive file um, numbers and the good thing about using sort of like a working file like this is um, you know you're not going to accidentally open the illustration that you've had previously and override it and accidentally save it again um, so that helps to prevent that whereas if you're doing like hundreds of illustrations and you're sort of like copying, you're copying artwork from here um, and then you're trying to finalize it over here, you might accidentally save over the same file name. Um, so that sort of helps to prevent that. Um, obviously we've already been across the artboard, so artboard size. So this is like obviously a two column layout and this helps you to get your scale right. Um, and yeah, obviously we've mentioned it before, um, you know, we might end up we might have um, some guides in here as well, which might help us to sort of uh, make sure, you know, maybe we, maybe we have some guides like that and this is like a double column layer and that might be a three column layer and that might, these guides might help us to um, fit it into a three column layer, which is, you can just obviously, it depends on the style of the book. Um, and then obviously the final file also allows you to quickly see if you're in the right scale because you know what, you've probably got like if you can see here, this document is sort of, you know, I've gone control zero to get in the center and then set it at like 300%. So if you create all your illustrations in the same way, they're all, you're, you're viewing it at the same scale every single time you do an illustration, no matter how, you know, you might be sort of like, you might be looking at this one like really, really in, uh, closely and you can be whatever scale you want here, but when you get to your final document, it, it's really relevant and it'll be at this same size every time. So you can kind of get a better sense of scale. So that's it. Any questions? Nope. Okay.